uh, these are this part of the meeting is an open meeting, and I know it's being videotaped. If any of you audio tape it, uh, don't dub special words in that I didn't say. But thank you very much for anybody's name. But for information, this meeting is being audio taped, so if you want to know that, that's just kind of a disclosure. The gentleman back here is from, are you from 416? What chapter are you from? 1067. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, you're, you're one of Harmon's. Easy. Yeah. Robert. <laughs> okay, you didn't let me finish. <laughs> uh, I would like to call the meeting of the Alabama State Council of Vietnam Veterans of America to order and ask that we stand for an opening prayer. First, I will have a moment of silence, and then we will have our chaplain, Mr. Ray Gateman, open in prayer. We will have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Ken Robbins. Everybody on cover. Okay? Some of you on cover didn't have a helmet, so that would be good. Bow please. Heavenly Father, we look to you as the awesome attention to our place of joy, of knowing you, and Lord, the fellowship that we have here with this organization. For what we have been through with, that we might fellowship with each other, and that we might carry out the mission of the veterans to burden veterans. Bless our membership, bless our officers today, that we carry out the business and the expectations. Better for you, Lord. Yes. Pray for our POWs and MIAs and the family that pays the price. Be with our members of service wherever they are today. Pray the hedge about them, protect them, bring them back home to their families who need them more than anything else. Yes. We pray for the time that we have spent with each other, the Lord, and the time that we have that we're had separation from our families. God is strengthened. He was this great nation in Florida. We know there is one nation under God in the visible. We live in justice for all the Lord. And we still stand up for better for this nation today. In thy name we pray. Amen. 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 I got a lady, so read this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. For which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Six, please. Uh, before we go any further, our uh, esteemed Sergeant at Arms has asked the opportunity to make an announcement. Now, Lonnie is our Sergeant at Arms. He's big enough to deal with some help to take care of most of these things. I, I got some pretty big men in here. All right. Uh, why? I need to talk. Silence the holding phones, please. Silence all phones. There is a $5 fine. Uh, Without exception. Pay up to me so I can give it to Mr. Reynolds. Uh, Please do not leave the door without paying. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lonnie. All right, the next item on the first item on the agenda is reading of BDA principles. Now you have a document that says BDA Constitution of 2011, but we didn't change our principles when we mentioned this in 2015. <clears throat> so I'm going to call on John Hall to make the initial motion to read this, and it's very careful to read this because this is what we're about. This is why we're here, and this is how we should treat each other. John, do you stand? Let's all stand, those who can, while we read the principles. While John reads, and we listen. Declaration of Principles for the Vietnam Veterans of America. We the veterans who served during the Vietnam War will embrace your sacrifice and service to the country, the 
the most fundamental and cherished bonds of our democracy, reaffirm that commitment to spirit and ideals, accepting it as the solemn responsibility of our survival to bear the burden of what has been, so that tragedy once endured can never be forgotten. And we do so resolve that the true measure of our worth as citizens, as veterans, and as patriots be found in our willingness to draw from and abide by these strengths and convictions born of heritage and experience. To hold that a sacred and binding contract exists between governors and governed, with the latter recognizing their obligation to compulsory foreign or domestic service equitably shared by all, in the form of morally obligated to implement foreign and domestic policies that are clear, consistent, and reflective of the will of the people. To hold further that the contract extends to post obligatory service with the nation bound whenever and wherever appropriate to the prompt delivery of compensation to the individuals or survivors in direct proportion to sacrifice and service rendered. <coughs> to honor with dignity the sacred memory of the war dead and so in dignity ensure that the lasting legacy of the fallen is responsibility for not exploitation of their sacrifice. To stand for cooperation, dialogue, and friendship among the nations of the world community with full respect and support of the principle essential to our national life. Welcome home. Welcome home. Okay. 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 Have everybody got an agenda? I mean, everybody got the men. Okay, thank you. Now, the next item on the agenda is welcome guests. And we're going to do it, do it this way. I, I've got, we've got one very special guest that's here. And then when we do the roll call of officers, we will, I mean, the roll call of chapters, we'll let each chapter present. Tell us who they're who they're trying to bet on. That will make things a little more consistent. This time I would like to introduce our Region 4 Director, who also serves on the National Board of Directors of DBA. He's a former chairman of the uh, of a committee we formed to deal with hazards right after uh, Katrina. And actually we received money down in the enterprise when they had a horrible tornado down there. On the disaster relief committee. Uh, in the 2015 uh, convention, we elected him as our Region 4 director. And uh, without any other view, I would like him to take whatever comments he has. Uh, he is uh, from from Florida. Uh, he has an active, been an active member of UGA for a long time. A long time. Yearned up there, there working with us. So I would ask Craig to give a report from the region or anything else. Craig Thompson. Uh, uh, for those of you who weren't at the convention last year in the Army, I was in the cab like you're doing. Anyhow, I made sure that I get cards to give out to everybody. And Go back to RSW Airport. They're sitting in the pocket of the car right beside there, and I'll be happy to see them. <laughs> Anyhow, um, please, I would like to be involved in what you are doing. I want to know what you're doing. If you have newsletters, send them to me. If you do it by email, if, you know, if it's electronic, put me on your list so I can keep track of what's going on in each of the states. Um, since my cards are where they should be, let me give you the information. My address is 942 Ione Drive, that's I-O-N-E Drive, Fort Myers, Florida, 33919. Can I just be a word for it? <coughs> Pardon? Can I just be a word for it? How do you spell work words? The address. Your address. It's, it's I-O, I-O Drive, I-O-N-E, Fort Myers, M-Y-E-R-S. I think if you'll send it to me, you'll get it out in a minute. How about if we send it out in a minute? Can you 
I've got two thirty two and thirty four. Correct. Thirty two. Thirty two delegates. The record show we have thirty two delegates here. Uh, approval of the agenda. The agenda you have before you. Is there any objection to any item on the agenda? So motion to accept the agenda. And a second. Say your name and chapter. Larry Howard, 637. Yes. And then your. Okay. Without objection, the agenda is approved. You have the minutes from February 20. continued at the last meeting was simply because when I passed it out to all of the chapters they wanted to review it which I gave everybody a copy I got one response back about some uh, spelling errors I corrected and it's in the new document there was Roberts is not no one else has been appointed chair no one was vice chair and so uh, I don't I think I have a problem considering the whole document this time. Is there a motion concerning the consideration of the uh, policy and procedure manual? I would like Mr. to entertain a motion. Since of all the confusion and, and the documents are not ready, everybody's not ready for it, even though it was said at the last meeting, the last SC meeting in February, that it will be tabled until this meeting. My recommendation would be that we table it and I will personally volunteer to work with that committee in writing the new document and I believe that both the ASC PPM and the ASC Constitution and Bylaws are in need, dire need of update. And I'll be glad to volunteer to help them and write, write it up and everything and get it out and write it in the 90 days it's required and be voted on at the next ASC meeting. Is there a second to that motion? I'll 
607 president, former chairman of the policy and procedure in my life. It's been going on for three years. Yes, it is a it is a tainted document as it stands. It was tainted before we got it put in our hands. Parts of it can be voted on, parts of it don't have to be voted on. Some of it's still standing order, so it doesn't get to, it doesn't have to have a vote. We have beat this thing to death. It's time to either Throw the thing out the window and use American Legion's damn policy and procedure. Don't use profanity, sir. All right. I would say to you in this regard, the the pop the whole thing is presented to us as one document. That's so true. the way it's presented, you either vote it up or down. And and if there's anything you disagree with, any word, then you vote no. The motion before us is to table it to allow further discussion. And, and, and in that regard, the new officers would, and, and a new committee needs to appoint, be appointed for a, a rise committee, and we have one volunteer. You have another comment, Mr. Swartz, you don't like to stand up, you have difficulty. Uh, I'm Tom Swartz, President of Chapter 701, and uh, I am in uh, disagreement with this uh, amendment. We should go ahead and uh, make a motion to go ahead and pass this uh, document okay. because there's been a lot of hard work. It's been pending. We've been tabling this thing. This must be the sixth time we've tabled it. Now is the time to just not table it one more time. Just just vote no on this so we can have a motion so we can pass it. Because you guys had the, the corrections and everything else. You've had it since February. A lot longer than 90 days. So it's time to vote on the document itself. Mr. President, Wait a minute. Uh, thank you. Anybody else gets a chance to? There's a motion on the floor. Uh, discussion. Yes, sir. If I understood you right, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Harmon, when they redo this thing, could you just take the changes and address the changes that you've made in your committee and present that to the body rather than the body having to consider the whole manual and trying to find out what's what you want to add, what you can just give out, pass out at the next meeting, just the changes to the PBM, and then we can look and say, what is the change that you made, and agree or disagree or add to that. That's what's confusing. Everybody have to read the whole way on. That's what they did in class. Yeah. The usual and customary, to uh, answer your question, usual, one usual and customary way to do that would be to put, you know, if you have a question with paragraph A, put multiple motions change it logically instead of one whole document with right. a statement that this is wait a minute, let me think. This is not in the national constitution. Answer his question. Yes sir. President members, I have in my possession a copy of the proposed 2016 policy procedure manual with blue ink showing the corrections instilled or inspired to put into it. Is my my understanding that this was placed out 90 days previous to this. There's a copy right here if anybody wants to see it. It's got blue suggestions for change. And uh, basically, if you accept the document as printed right here, right here in blue, one lump sum, there it is. This is uh, three years plus, I'd say four, we've been working on this. And the idea being that I've got one, I guess I'm slow. But the fact of the matter is, here it is, proposal. It was sent out to everybody. In many days, it was approved. The changes are highlighted in blue. You don't know, copy to get out here now? Yes, for everybody. Every chapter had one. You know, the one that I got last time had all kind of handwritten stuff. Yeah. Like yes, but you were saying. 
Did you have another comment, Mr. Uh, yes. Uh, go ahead. No, no, no. You're standing up. Go ahead. All right. Our committee started just after the 2013 National Convention. We were to change and bring our uh, BPM and bylaws in line with the national. It was delayed until after the 2015, which there was more national constitutional changes. And the, the change, or the, what, the document you have, and there was one followed, the one you had didn't have handwritten notes and acknowledged that there was changes to the national constitution. The one that John's talking about is one that was revised that was sent out. Now, all we are trying to do is to bring the sections in our PPM and bylaws in line with the national. We're, we're, now, uh, yes, been, we're, I, I, I do have the floor. Just a minute. Yes, sir. What, what Warren and I have talked about is to additionally bring it in uh, with adopting a new, uh, say we adopt the Constitution's election committee policy for chapters for the state council we also would like to bring before the state council the idea of a board of directors not there's a separate yes, yeah i know the the state council can vote if they want a board of directors but it's up to the state council but we can vote on the document today because all documents can be revised. Okay. So if we have something, we can revise it. Okay. That's Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, sir. <coughs> Eric Granger, 373 again. Uh, I'm a latecomer in all this, but I will say this. I know some of the chapters have not gone over this and prepared themselves for a vote. 373 is one of them. I would like to have time to go over this with the chapter and then vote on it so we can have a good vote rather than just vote for something we don't know. Yeah. Thank you very much. Do you have a comment? That's what they said. Maybe, sir. Where did you change it? John Swartz, Jefferson. Water. You guys got the other Here's enough. Minutes. Please look at the uh, old business. I'll read it. Policies and procedure man by, uh, by Mr. Becker. Passed out copies of the PPM with directions and omissions. Changes are according to the National Constitution motion by Mr. Spores, and President Chapter 701, second by Delegate, to take back to the chapters for approval and vote on at the next House House Council meeting. Motion passed unanimously. We're just kicking this can down the road. And if you guys did not get those things that were passed out to you, you guys are not reading. That's all there is to There's a motion on the floor. Uh, oh, no. There's a motion. There's a motion on the floor. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Okay. Uh, judgment of the chair is the no's today. I make a motion we accept the uh, policies and procedures panel as we had stated, and I had just read from the other okay. Okay. okay, we will now have a roll call. Uh, call the officers first, and then uh, find the chapters. Mr. President, I have a question. Yeah. When you first started the vote, they were going for the motion. From the way we're in the boat at that time. Wouldn't we call for a new boat and start playing with the boat? They did. Yes, they, they voted mine down. Wait a minute. We're talking about the four votes that put that on these two votes. Now, here's the argument they have. Okay. Here's the argument they have. Okay. I got a correction with 18 notes. Let's clarify what we're voting for. Okay. Right. There is a lack of clarity. Okay. The motion is the motion is to adopt this process. Alright? That's the motion. Whether we adopt this process or not. 
this whole chain just like it is. Just That's the process. vote. Just That's the vote. So we will re-vote to make sure everything can you. And uh, I would ask, uh, we need somebody else to, uh, we need two people to tabulate. All right? I would ask the secretary to tabulate. I mean, the first vice to tabulate and the secretary. All right? Second box. All right, roll call, and this time the officers will vote. Okay, first officer. No.
authorize some county service officers to take the power of attorney when we do a claim, all right? You know how long some claims last? As long as 15 years. So when you take a new claim, an appeal, and some of us have, I got an appeal in for 11 years. 11 years in the appeal process. So we're looking at a study group through the benefits committee to perhaps limit and eliminate new, new powers of attorneys off. Because that's, and or other programs that we have. Because that's finite. One of these days, there's just going to be a couple of you younger guys or the black ladies here running this organization. The second program that we've got to address can we, is... Can we do, do the first one first? No, oh, let me finish. And then I'm going to tell you the, the thing. I'm not tell, let me give you a report. And then Mr. Thomas may have input from the National Board. The second avenue we've got is what are we going to do with our assets? How are we going to carry on our name? You know, if we're all gone, <coughs> how are we going to carry on our name? One of the, there was a couple of avenues that we've already looked at and decided that wasn't the way to go. We looked at one organization that, called, that was composed of the Gulf War vets. And at one time, President Roy was not to drop them, making them our successor. Well, they had a visit. So that's not an avenue. Another avenue we looked at at the national level and at the national division and, and along the board was perhaps the associates. And because they're a 501c4, you know, the IRS said they could we couldn't be together. That is fizzled. So we're engaging at a national level to start working with the board of directors and their program presentation in the October board of what happens in our future. And all of us like to think we're living together, living forever. How many of us are 70 and above? Look around, folks. I've been active in this organization for 45 years, for 25 years. I started when I was 45. The perspective I had in 45 and 70 is a reality. How many of us, are there any, I won't ask about 80. How many of us, you know, everybody, is there anybody in your under age 65 that's a member of BBS? God bless you, baby. So, so they may be up here, they, they will, they'll work on their own bylaws. We'll all be gone. But that's what's happening. That's what's happening in our lives. So any, so I just give you that as a report. Any other things that you know is coming up? I don't know. I, I can't think of anything specific that's coming up. The bottom line is that one of the one of the most that was made on the floor at national was that we do accept seven. We expand the organization to go beyond us. And the reason that I I put that forward because as far as I'm concerned. Why would, why would we want them to be that wheel? I mean, we've already done this. We created this organization, which I consider the premier Vietnam veteran service organization in the country. And why would we expect them to be that wheel? Of course, they aren't ready to set out on their own and create an organization like we did. If you look at the history, the war was over in '75. Most of us were out of the war. In the year 470, and it took 12 years for us to get our things together and wrap around having an organization, let alone actually creating it. And their, their wars are still going on. Are they ready to get wrapped around an organization of their own? Why not open it up to us? That's my personal opinion. But I represent you guys. And I want to know what you want me to do. I do too. So, so I call on you wanted the first one you want to comment on? Right. Yes, sir. Identify yourself in chat. We know who you are. Yeah, I'm a clean five puppet. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Don't make a decision. This is being recorded. Okay. As as a chapter 607 president, as a member of the Veterans <laughs> 
Administration Visit 7, uh, Veterans Voice Advisory Committee. The, Mr. Sloan Gibson, which is in Washington, is Mr. McDonald's assistant. Who, and we can do him all the time. No, he's a good name. We didn't put Sloan. him there. Somebody else. Sloan's a good name. Sloan's a good Sloan's okay. Uh, why he has he has asked why do we not have veterans from Vietnam representing them in their hospital and they beg for people that are Vietnam vets simply because most of the claims that are coming through the door right now to the tune of forty five thousand uh, are are Vietnam vets that are refiling from old claims and new vets that are coming through the door fresh out of Desert Storm, I say fresh out. Desert Storm was in the 90s. But some of those guys are now just starting to get into the process of filing claims. <coughs> the new ones are filing new claims, and they don't know where to go. So they have implemented a program for them to know how to do it. And well, I won't be in my best to help them. So well, what, we're trying, to ship. what we're contemplating doing is trying to get the POAs with the BFW, BAB, and the region, because they're a veteran organization, and right. most of the leadership in those groups are Vietnam veterans. But I, don't think we should, but I don't think we should do away with our Vietnam vets VSOs, because if we do that, we're, we're basically uh, admitting defeat from... No, we can't. The problem, the, the financial problem is a 15-year plan. Yes? I'm proud of the BAB, and I'm proud of the BAB, and I'm proud of the Send something when we go to Nashville in Washington, D.C., in the They are looking at numbers. They're looking at numbers. Exactly. And here, and, and BBA is an outstanding group. It's an outstanding group. I look at a bunch of good folks. I don't see a bad person out there. I've never used any profanity. I wouldn't even go have a taste of people. I was raised that way. We got near the kill in the bedroom. Therefore, I agree with everything about everything. But if we get going to the detail, men cannot get their money when the boy top got their money, big top, it, which is quite different. We have a national commander, national people, and we pay them very little, I guess, in many ways. I do not get that. Last year alone, I spent about 5000 out of my pocket. I, I don't miss it because God's a good God and a great God. And, and Wayne said he's had one in for 11 years. So I don't take these going in that long way. They either go to the gift session or my congressman out there in the county of Wayne. Rob was there in that crowd down there ever since Congress was made on Dickens World War II. We, we, we cannot let these things go that long. Our Vietnam people are dying. I have got a claim that's soon to be fixed. The veteran died in the Navy on. If I don't get the benefit, why? Wow, because you took it up high. I was just trying to explain to you the considerations of the national. I understand. I need mean, I get you. Wait a minute. Let me agree with you on that view. If we do not have the money, we don't have the money. Okay? Now, so people don't take into consideration. So you can't operate these organizations without money. And, and see, I've got to spend money out of my pocket. And I had to see this organization for money, folks. I mean, I've been you know, it's hard to get the money more than I can. Many ways. I went out of my way, went out on the street for them out of 945. <clears throat> we didn't have anybody in the region. I'm here to tell you folks today, we got to quit thinking of self and thinking about each other. All right, we're going to that in that stable bit. And if you give me something over here, I'll try to help you with it. All right. You want to talk? I want to tell you something about finding the final objective. I put out on every table for the Vietnam veteran. If you read on page 22, I, I wrote, I, I write in every issue of the veteran, the concept of the budget process. What I try to do as national treasurer is do something. The next one, the vet, next veteran that comes out, every one of you want to read it because the next meeting we're going to put on insurance programs and are we all appropriately insured? If I just did a whole research about there's not the injured, well, on page 22 is my article that talks about the budget process. And we aren't broke now, but we're looking to the future so we don't go broke. 
If you get a telephone call saying you've been scheduled for a CMP exam over the telephone, say thank you, no thank you, have a good day. <laughs> Don't do it over the telephone. Amen. I'm still fighting to make the battle. Okay. All right, sir. Let's the whole business board of directors who's brought that up. Yes, sir. Board of directors of the Alabama State Council. I would say that if the last, there was some discussion at the last convention and some folks, some state councils already had boarded because the directors and those were illegal. It's not, there was never a provision in the national constitution for a board of directors, but some state councils had it. So we amended the constitution, the national constitution, to permit board of directors. The Alabama State Council has never had a board of directors, so we were not in need of that resolution. But who, who put this on the agenda? I did. Yes, sir. I, I put it on the agenda for discussion uh, because there's uh, John Hall and I was talking about it. You know, normally we have three state council meetings a year. And what John and I were talking about, if we had a board of directors, excuse me, I just put cough hey, drop in my uh, mouth. Yeah. If we had a board of directors made up of chapter presidents, and this is something, again, that uh, Ward and I talked about, we could possibly, and again, this is all in discussion, uh, I've learned not to make too many comments, but we could possibly cut out one state council meeting and have a regional board of director meeting so that it would be closer to, say, South Alabama, the middle of the state, and North Alabama with a board of directors that could kind of come into what John and I used to call brainstorming sessions so that we could further the BBA state agenda, share information and things like that through a board of directors. It's, it's for discussion, and that's the reason I put it on the agenda. That's not a bad idea. They're not, and they would, it would be, may not be a board of directors, we may need to call it something. A board of directors usually exercises I know. control. Thank you. So, so it, we may need to work on that idea. Yes, sir. Then you, you're uh, we used to, a year ago, we did have a like, board of directors slash the executive board that would meet. The problem about that is like in this manual, over and over and over, it's committee, 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 and you're talking about dollars to meet. When you bring somebody to Mobile to Montgomery or vice versa, whatever, uh, when we start talking about committees and boards, we need to take, keep that in mind. And always the board of directors consisted of the officers and members. It was all, you know, that's what we had for years. It worked okay. Uh, but we would just, we'd take one time a year and meet and we'd plan out something for the state council and then so we were the, you know, the office of the council too. So. That's worth fleshing out and it's not a bad idea. But I, I don't know if we want to give up the third meeting, but it's hard enough to come. But it's up to y'all. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll put it. We, could, we could keep the three meetings and kind of reestablish a a fourth regional meeting, but most most people don't realize that the state council here, all the delegates, y'all are the state council, and Wayne is the president of the state council, so the authority is in the delegates, okay? So, you know, and we have to exchange ideas. We have to sit across from each other and say, Wayne, I mean, uh, Warren, you're ugly, but you have good ideas. No, yeah. I have one. Let me tell you this. Let's look at the budget and let's look at, and actually, I need call. I mean, there's times we may, I can see value in me calling no, the of the chapter presidents at some central location. Right. And, and do that. I will take that as a suggestion and see if we can move forward, or whoever else is president. Yep. Has to do that. Which is constitutional. Yes, sir. I could call a meeting of the state presidents. I could do what we pick better in the year. They could do it in a better way. I, that is a good suggestion for whoever is president of the policy. Right. That's a good suggestion. All right? Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm sorry I didn't need to ignore you at all, but he's both class. It's all
Uh, basically, what, what we're talking about is that president of 945, I've got certain situations that happen that 1067 has dealt with, and they, they can give ideas. So basically, what we're doing is communication. Keyword, general, ladies, communication. What are you guys doing? Right? What are we doing? What are you guys doing? Okay, what are you guys doing? So basically, what it is is a method of communication so that we can tell you guys what we're doing and what we need, and then we can all work together to make us better. And then as an afterthought, I'm thinking that the powers to be in the government said, well, how's the end not better to one year off for another 20 years? So we can hold our breath. So forget them. Yeah, well, there's an old saying, delay, deny, wait till they die. Right, but see, here's the point. You know, I'm not going ready to give up. And, you know, I like this point. We're all brothers. We're all together. Right, so let's make it something that's worth exciting. Okay, thank you. And that's a good idea. We'll look at budget wise. Yes, sir, to be made to be called something like a work session. Right where we come together. We can certainly do that. That's a good idea. And sure. very, I appreciate you breaking it up. And if you and Warren can agree on something, <laughs> <laughs> it may be the second coming. We may not be. You know, there's the thief in the chair between us. All right. Now, the next item on the agenda is the election committee. So, we're not going to have to watch it. The next item is simple. I don't know who put lunch in there. The goal is to have election and then lunch. Mr. Harmon, we need a break before we go to the Yeah, you can give them Just a 10-minute uh, break be before we start the election. Give me a second, y'all. Breathe. We're going to bring Mr. Harmon and the election committee up. And Sergeant at Arms, yes, sir. I have quarter after. All right? Okay. Quarter after 10. At 10.30. We will assemble back in. Yes, sir. Off, and Mr. Harmon will take the chair.